My dog looks like a rat right now because he got a shitty fur cut. Literally the moment that I started recording this, the sun disappeared, but I think it's back now, so we're good. Hi guys, it's Jasmine. Today I will be reacting to my high school art portfolio. I'm gonna be looking at the stuff that I submitted for college applications. Uh, that was a very stressful time, but right now I am a sophomore in Pratt Institute in New York and I am a painting major and I think I have improved a bit since uh, when I was 16, 17, hopefully. But we're gonna look at that today. I logged into my Pratt slide room for the first time in like two years and I have all my art scattered over there. How should I do this? I'm just gonna go in order with what I turned in. This is all the pile of stuff I have. At the time, I was very proud of what I submitted for my applications. And I was like, this is it. This is gonna be the level I'm gonna be at for like the next 10 years. But honestly, I realized that I think my art has changed a lot since then. But yeah, the first one, the pink road, it is this piece. Literally, for the detail part, I wrote this piece was inspired by the trails behind my backyard, which it was. I used um, an image that I took when I was taking a walk on the trail and then I painted it into this. I actually like this one just because it's very colorful and I've been really into colors lately. But the colors were done nicely. I think this is one of the only ones that I like. I took AP art in high school where I also have a video for that. Um, that's what I took in junior year. So some of my pieces in this portfolio are from my AP art portfolio. And I also took an outside Asian art class where they helped me prep my portfolio for college. So I'm only looking at my prep portfolio right now because that's the school I'm, I'm in. This piece is titled Corruption. It is this one. Clearly you can tell that I was getting very bored of drawing this piece. I don't really like it now looking back. It's kind of ugly, but I'm very proud of the details here. I hated doing this piece because it was a good concept in my head, but then I was using acrylic paint for the babies and I hate using acrylic. I was like, oh yeah, this piece is a response to China's one child policy. Oh yeah, I utilize colors that are frequently seen as of Chinese culture, such as traditional red silk, porcelain baby, and the color gold. I had fun drawing the babies. I mean, they were inspired by a bunch of ceramic sculptures that I saw on Instagram. That's what I referenced it from. Oh, this part is coming off. For my Pratt portfolio, I think for every portfolio that I submitted, I put my favorite work in the beginning and in the end and then the average work in the middle. I think this is my favorite work that I've done in my high school time It is this one. This was executed pretty nicely, but if I look at it now, I think it's a little bit flat. This piece, I remember I had a lot of fun drawing it because I was literally drawing human sushi. I just, I think this side looks kind of shit because it's just so flat. There's a lot of detailed line work on this side, but then on this side, everything, all the pen work that I layered on top of the watercolor goes the same way. I want to show the difference between the front and like the back, but clearly, um, I don't think it worked out that well. But look, look, it's little babies. It's little baby sushi. But look, they're so tiny. They're like, human heads and sushi and like human bodies. On to the next one. This one is called Voodoo Hands. This piece was actually done when I was in sophomore year. So how old was I back then? Yeah, I was 15 when I did this. On the back, my teacher wrote, I think he looked at this the wrong way because he wrote this way when it was supposed to be this way. 50 out of 50, excellent job, nice anatomy work. So this was an assignment in portfolio class where we were supposed to draw five hands and combine it with something else. This was the time where I really enjoyed drawing hands. Literally in class, I would just look at my hand and then draw it because I got so bored listening <laughs> to my teachers. But for a 15 year old, this was really good, I think. I redid this one three times actually because I was really unsatisfied with my first two attempts. This is what happens when you don't sketch out your ideas. Oh, also fun fact, this booty doll was um, from that K-pop group VIX and I added tea bags for some reason and there's also ribbon and thread. It's just very whack choices, but yeah, good enough. The next one is called Haunt Me because that's such a scary name. Ooh, this is satisfying. This piece was an experimental piece. 
that is exactly what I said. This was part of my figure drawing class. We were drawing from a live model and I was just really sick and tired on drawing on paper. So I had this glass plate. Wait, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me restart this. This glass is where I was testing out another project and then I fucked up on it. So I was like, I'm just gonna paint it on this glass and it probably won't even turn out good. But at least I got through this one class. It was a very long class. I would go there from 3 to 7, and the figure drawing class would be from 7 to 10 p.m. This is the side that I painted on for fun. And then when you turn it to the back, it's this. And because from the previous project, there was red paint, it looks like she's bleeding. And I said that was very cool. Glass is fun to experiment on. Honestly, the painting job here is pretty shitty. I think the red gives it a nice contrast. This next piece is called Run Little Children. Yet again, I said this was inspired by a dream that I had. I want to create a scene that would leave a haunting image within the viewer, which is assisted by the choice of primary colors. So the dream that I had, naked people running through a trail. And when I woke up, I drew that in my Snapchat. When my two teachers and I were discussing how to make this piece come alive. Um, we thought that using primary colors would make it really creepy. I used an app to reference these running people. It was like a figure drawing app. So you could move the limbs anywhere you wanted and you could rotate the head around, like flip it backwards and it was just so fun. I don't really like the grass cause uh, it's just like, but overall, um, a good concept, I guess. I tend to have very visual dreams. So it helps with my art a lot. Moving on, this piece is called this was a piece I painted during my winter trip to Beijing, China. I always saw meat stands within the small alleyways and was inspired. In addition, I want to experiment with the main color scheme of red tones. I had no concept of oil painting. The technique in this piece is very bad. This piece was when I first started getting into oil painting, so I clearly... I didn't really have the technique. Right now, I like it when everything is rendered very smoothly, but I think back then, I liked like rough strokes. This piece is very flat. The thing about copying photographs is that when you just copy it completely, the painting or drawing or whatever you're creating, it will always turn out flat a lot of the times just because the photo is very flat and if you copy it, then it's gonna be flat. The next two pieces are part of a series that I titled, Who Am I? These two pieces were created as a response towards the restraints within society. The first piece, Caged, is a self-portrait of how I sometimes feel about my surroundings. Completely trapped with nowhere to go, suffocated by life, caged like a bird. On the outside, people see something that is completely a pretense because the truth is portrayed on the inside. The bird that wishes to fly freely. And the second piece, titled Reaching, depicts how society prevents individuals from being who they truly are. I was a bit reaching for it with this whole concept because I I just, I didn't want this to be a regular self-portrait. I was like, I gotta be extra and like show how deep I am. I also think this was the time where I got really into Tumblr. So I saw a lot of deep shit on there and I was like, wow. I think I did a pretty good job for a 16 year old, but it is also flat. I think the background on this piece could have been painted way darker just to show more contrast because the background tone and the foreground tone is very similar and also look at that shirt it's so flat i did a pretty good job on the face and the bird here this piece i remember i was very very proud of it it kind of looks boring i tried could have more contrast the concept was good wait i don't even remember what i said about this um something about the hand being tied down society prevents that or something like that but then once you let go of that you become a flower <laughs> this piece i was like now i can show my ability in other mediums i literally bs this description so bad i just said i want to connect nature with human anatomy and i collaged a bunch of clippings from scientific magazines wait why did i even do this in the first place so for the brain i used branches because i was like brain reminds me of branches for the heart that's where all your feelings are so like flowers they bloom they die they grow and then for the eye i had leaves because well, what was it again? <laughs> um, I accidentally smushed it. It used to be a, a circle, but now it's like... I tell it realms because I didn't have a title idea. So I literally scrolled through Spotify playlists and I chose the first one that sounded right. 
titled Meadows. I did this piece for my AP art portfolio and I just put it into my portfolio to show that yes, I can draw from life. But to be honest, I got really lazy. I took a photo of this in my house and then I turned it into black and white and then I drew it, which is why it's so flat and I have nothing else to say for this other than it's very flat because all the tones are the same. The next three things that I turned in, I can't find one of them. These are my figure drawings. Uh, this is one of them. The foot is over there. The foot is here. Something like this. I think this was a six hour figure drawing session. This one is another one done in watercolor. I planned these figure drawings because colleges like to see figure drawings in your portfolio just to see that yes, you can draw people. But honestly, I don't think it really matters as long as you have like one or two. In your first year of college, most of the schools have you take a class where you just draw from life models. I think I was around 16, 17 when I did these pieces, so pretty good job for me. The next piece is called Golden Nightmares. It is this sculpture because I want to show I could experiment with other mediums. Inspired by a girl in my nightmares. <laughs> wait, where is this hair from? Oh, wait. Oh my God, I cut off my American Girl doll for this piece. Doesn't that look creepy? It looks pretty creepy. I don't know why my mom put it on a shelf in the living room. This is scary. Wait, I turned in this piece? What the fuck? This is a self-portrait. I think I painted this sophomore year of high school and then I added these little glittery faces with nail paint. This piece is so bad, it's so flat. This was like my first time trying oil paint and then I got too impatient for it to dry. So then I did acrylic paint on top. I had long hair back then. So bad. Why did I even turn this in? Oh. The next five pieces I submitted as a series. So one PDF file, five images. Technically, you shouldn't do that for your portfolio, but my teacher said that I, I should. I don't know. I wanted to show the everyday life within the traditional hutongs, which are small alleyways of Beijing. These scenes are all during winter because that is when I visit Beijing the most. When I visit Beijing every year, more and more hutongs are being destroyed and replaced by modernized buildings and I painted these paintings as a way to preserve and showcase the streets that were once so important within the Chinese culture and city life. Let me just say, these pieces all look very flat. Again, because I just copied directly from a photograph. So this is the first one. I think I did a pretty good job for that age with watercolor. Wait, what does this say? A completely one plane. This one, let me just say, I'm pretty proud of this bag. I'm pretty proud of this bag. It looks pretty good. Very focused on details. My signature back then was so ugly. I don't even know what that is. Like even now, I still pay a lot of attention to details, but I wonder how long that took me. The words, there's also words here. I can't even read them. And this is another one. The details are pretty good. This piece was very rushed. I completely BSed it. Like you can tell that I rushed through this. The details are pretty good. <laughs> And then for the next two that I put, I have no clue where they are. Not even gonna bother showing them. This piece was technically a self-portrait, but it had the same concept as the, the other painting that I showed you with the birds. So my teachers were like, oh, just say that this is someone else. I mostly use myself as reference because I'm just no energy to find other people to model for me. The light in the mirror is like the light at the end of a dark tunnel. So close yet so far. I remember that I got so tired of painting this piece that my teacher was like, I get it. I feel you. I'll just help you a bit. <sighs> why is it so tacky? I don't get why it's so tacky. I used my teacher as a reference and I put my face here. Literally all my concepts are the same. But yeah, that's it for my portfolio. I'll also show you guys Two pieces that I never finished, but I was supposed to put into my high school portfolio. My sheep. Honestly, I kind of regret not finishing this because I feel like it would have looked really good. But it's just little sheep. And this part is made out of clay. Wait, actually, I'm so mad that I didn't finish this. Like, this looks better than some of the other pieces that I turned in. Another one is this one. Similar style with the my sheep because I collaged origami paper on it. These were supposed to be clouds, different types of clouds or some shit. Wish my boobs looked as nice as these. 
But yeah, I drilled holes through this. And then I was gonna put fairy lights underneath this and then take a picture of it in the dark. I never got around to that. I never finished it because this was just taking too long and I was just getting so bored and tired of it. So I just stopped completely. I also had someone review my portfolio. I just found the email and they said that my portfolio back then as a whole shows great work making, strong drawing skills, and an inquisitive mind. And they really enjoyed my sketchbook pages. Continue working in the format. I didn't like my sketchbook that I think some of your more finished portfolio pieces lose the movement that is clear in your sketchbook pieces. I was a bit salty about this email back then because I was kind of immature, but I understand now what they're saying. Another suggestion that they said was, to consider the lighting conditions in your pieces. Yes, because everything looks so flat. Setting up a specific lighting condition can add dimension and more nuanced color schemes and mood for your work. Oh, some of your pieces have a kind of all overlooking lighting scheme that finds them slightly. Exactly! They just said that was strong, but like kind of flat which I agree with completely. I wonder if I make the same video once I graduate out of college, if my view towards the art that I made would be even more different, who knows, we'll see. And also I wonder if once I graduate out of college, my view towards the art that I make now would be different. We'll see you again. But I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope that you guys had fun. I hope it wasn't too boring and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.